it's like what is BIOS, UEFI, motherboard, uh, hard disk, SSDs, DVD, CD, SMPS, flyby disk, cabinet, and outside connectors like um, mouse, keyboard, okay. input device, mouse, uh, keyboard, uh, monitors, printers, scanners, touchpads, touchscreens, mics, speakers, uh, card readers, Bluetooth uh, connecting devices, external hard disk, this kind of stuff. And also we discussed about a processor, like a CPU, central process unit. What are the things nowadays we have to check it? And how to check it? I showed in a task manager. I showed in a task manager only. Also, I will show you in a different manner. So then how to check our system configuration that is also I will show you. Okay. So this is few things we can able to get it. So different uh, manufacturer of process like Intel and AMD most popular uh, process uh, processors available in the market. So mostly we use Intel processors. So later on uh, people nowadays using for a multimedia purpose AMD is a Okay. Next. You know, when you go to the processor, so one of the thing is width means 32 bit processor, 64 bit processor. If you have a 32 bit processor, which is world processor, so compulsory we have to use 32 bit operating system, 32 bit applications on it, 30 bit to bit drivers on it. If you are using 64 bit processor, so compared to 64 bit operating system, 64 bit application, 64 bit device drivers. Different Intel processors are there. So, what is this bit? Is nothing but a, a instruction set. The size of instruction set decide which bit processor it is. 32 bit processor contains 32 bit instruction. Okay. So different process styles are there. Different way to represent an application or operating system or a processor or device drivers. Okay, so different ways you can able to represent 32 bit or a 64 bit. Like x86 means Intel 32 bit. x86 underscore 64 means uh, Intel 64. Also represent x64 i386 i586 represent is also a 32 bit intel processor but yesterday i didn't told about a amd amd processor so amd is also there so for amd 64 amd 64 amd processor 64 bit so it's a 64 bit or a amd 64 means 64 bit processor is amd bit is 64 like that So what is the 64 bit pro processor features? You get a virtualization technologies for both server virtualization, desktop virtualization support is there. So it is a built in processor instruction set like a VTX, AMD V kind of stuff. So because of this technology, we can run multiple virtual machines with the different uh, uh, guest operating systems on a single physical machine. Multi-core processing, Multi-core processor means single processor we can able to divide into multiple things. Okay. Example I3 processor, I5 processor means I3 processor initially two two core processor. Now it is four core processor. I5 processor. I7 processor. So multi-core processors we can able to get it. Okay. UEFI support will be there. So BIOS is the older one. So new hardware, new support is UEFI diet support is also coming. Secure board. Device digital signature is compulsory. Compulsory how to use genuine device drivers. We cannot bypass it. So these are the things we have uh, discussed. So today 
I, I, there is a few more things about your uh, uh, CPU. That is, what is cache memory? Uh, what are the um, what we can say like uh, what is heat sink kind of stuff is also there. But I am trying to uh, tell in a troubleshooting that one. Okay. So what I will start now is a, about a RAM, ROM, uh, those small small differences also. Okay, before going to start, guys, I will tell one important thing. So anyway, it just happened. So instead of telling, I will tell later kind of stuff. So I will, I will show you now. Okay. I have a document, so I have a PPT. Look at here. This is my PPT. Yesterday I created this PPT. When I double click on this PPT, it's open like this. In the application called WPS. So when this laptop purchase, they given a office trial version. Microsoft Office trial version. So uh, because of this original operating system is a Microsoft operating system. OK, and Windows 8, it came with the Windows 8 and Office 2013. Problem is 2008 is permanent. Sorry, uh, Windows 8 is permanent and uh, it's a genuine operating system and office 2013 is a trial version for trial you have to buy again it will be have to pay again five thousand six thousand or maybe a ten thousand depends upon it i don't want to buy so i installed free wps Okay, no problem. Boomika, join now. So, yeah, here it is. Um, Mahesh present, sir. Mahesh. Mahesh. Very good. Soumya Lakshmi, Aswajit. Kashi Vishwanath. Why am I unable to find Kashi Vishwanath? Yes, sir. Kashi Vishwanath is there? Yes, sir. This is Anya. That's it. Very good. No. Okay, so I, I started using WPS Office. Now, my organization gave me Office 365. So I can happily open this PPT from Office 365. But when I'm double click on it, it's open with a uh, WPS Office. OK, I don't want like that. OK, so when I double click, it's open with a WPS Office. I don't want to open like that. It should open with a Microsoft Office only. So I have to right click. Generally, you can decide open with PowerPoint or WhatsApp or a WPS office or you can choose any other options also. I want to open with a PowerPoint. I want to open with a PowerPoint. But every time if I open like this, again struggle, right? So I have to do a right click, I have to select. Okay, I have to right click, I have to open with PowerPoint. So every time I have to do it, so better to change the default or to change the default application. Right click. Properties. See it is open with the W3 office by default. Click on change. Select PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, so now open with the PowerPoint. So any extension with the dot PPTX, now it will open with the PowerPoint only. I just double click, now it is open with the PowerPoint Office 365. Like this. Okay. So this is called a default. So in a, an application may open with any different, uh, sorry, any document. You open a document, it is open with a different application than your 
uh, actual application. So what to do? Change its default. You including, so you can see it is. So this is a dot DOS EX. If you go to properties, if I open it, will open with the R word only. If I change, if I change to uh, uh, open with the WPS office or open with the PDF reader, open with the Google reader, so then it will open like that only. So this is by changing how to change the default. Guess understand small point. This is all yesterday I discussed. If you want this PPT because it's not completed, so I already send a complete PPT hardware related, which is world one. Uh, this is I'm writing for you uh, directly. If you want to check this one parallelly with the pictures, so then I will uh, put this one into Google Drive. Google Drive means directly you can open with the Google uh, kind of stuff. OK, uh, Google link you can open share with the Google. You can't access from here. If I share it, uh, it will be shared to my organization only, not to you. OK, so live EPT is you can able to. OK, so I said uh, I will jump to uh, RAM and ROM means primary. Memory. What are the primary memories? RAM and ROM. Random access memory, read only memory. Random access memory, read only memory. So, We'll see the importance of these differences. RAM and ROM differences. So RAM is called a RAM access number. So when you say random, random means, for example, you have a, a 10 balls are there. Some are uh, red, some are green, some are white, some are yellow. OK, so you pick a uh, you want to pick a only yellow ball. So then you go and pick a yellow ball. So that is called a random selection. So you think it is like a probability uh, I'm telling. So of course the probability and a random probability is next part is random only. OK, probability and statistics. So probability is nothing but a random selection. Probability of selecting particular thing. So simply you can say random means I have certain files in this folder. I can choose which folder I want to read it. I can choose it. I can go through it. Um, I can work with it. I can add it like that. So that is called a random. OK, next type is sequential. What is sequential? Like a tape drives, you know, world, world style tape drives. Uh, audio cassettes are there now. Like this. These are the audio cassette, uh, video, ca VCR cassette, magnetic tapes are there. Okay. So these tape drives, magnetic tape drives. So like you have if you play the first song, then only you can play the second song. When second song is play completed, then third song. You cannot directly select the third song. Either you have to fast forward or move for front and back kind of stuff. Then only you can pick what you want it, but not directly. But in a digital, so we can pick it directly. So we can play if you want a third song, then you can play third song from your memory card or pen drives or hard disk and a RAM also. That's it is random access memory. What is ROM? Read only memory.
it is a, look like it is a childish clash again, but still uh, some people uh, face, uh, even though they know it, what is RAM and ROM we learn in a childhood day, 10th class intermediate, but some people uh, at the time of interviews, they ask very, very, very simple a question. They feel like uh, they don't know. So they, 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 it's not recollecting. That's why I told you like this. RAM is a volatile memory. ROM is a non-volatile memory. So guys remember NV, NV, capital or small, no problem, NV. Wherever you see at the time of memory kind of stuff, if you see a NV, means non-volatile. NV RAM, non-volatile RAM, random access memory, but it is non-volatile. Means what are the data you store in it? It will be there even though power is off. NV RAM. SSD, NVMe, non-volatile memory. SSDs are NVMe type. So that's why keep the word in your mind. Okay. So what is the volatile memory? When power of data loss. So I'm putting very simple way without a big, big lines. So you turn off your power, uh, PC. Data is lost automatically. Okay. Data available given power is off. You turn on your com turn off your computer, data won't be lost. Okay. So what is RAM? RAM is a random access memory. It is a volatile memory. What is a volatile memory? When computer is off, when you are turn off or a power off the computer, data in the RAM, you will lose. ROM, ROM is a chip. The chip, whether, when, even you are, even the power is off, data is still available. Data is still available in the ROM chip. Okay. So, so small, small points can changeable. I can change RAM. I can add RAM. I can remove RAM. I can replace. RAM. Add, remove, replace RAM. In a ROM, it is fixed. You cannot remove the ROM. So it's a fixed chip. You you cannot you cannot means you can change it, but it is not much that much easy. It is fixed chip. Okay, uh, I think this is a small part. Okay, if you want to add something, yeah, you can able to add it. Uh, anything. Sheet is also open with a half is Those are a RAM and ROM differences. One by one, we'll go to the RAM part also. Random access memory. You know, primary storage, main memory, also called as 
main memory primary memory ram is also is a main memory so when you see a, the total memory main memory physical memory it's a ram memory only okay so it's a volatile memory these are the this is also i i added personally to this ppt so, so in a ram there is a two type of rams are there one is static ram another one is dynamic ram okay one is static ram another one is dynamic ram static rams are used for a cache memory this is a short name is sram dynamic rams are drams static rams are costly because pure form of transistors are there static rams also contains auto refresh mint it means data is loaded to the ram and ram load into the processor and processor load the data into the ram and ram load the process data to your io devices okay so it is the function i will i will show you in the di diagrammatic way but look at here okay so it is a cache memories are very useful it fastens that process okay but cache memories are built inside your cpu the cache memories actually actually build inside of cpu okay you know when we are started a career uh, you know that time uh, i i am i'm a trainer that time also i am a trainer in at, at 2009 so students ask sir where is the cache memory so we don't know so we show the cpu okay cpu picture and we show this is a cache memory this is part of cache memory uh, some internally it is there but uh, finally uh, even seniors i ask a senior uh, very senior like a 10 years 20 years experience candidate also unable to tell where is the cache memory originally again i refer my engineering books uh, about a computer organization kind of stuff okay so then i find that is the cache memory built inside here processor only okay so for a additional ram means you want a additional ram for which interacts with your io that is regular our ram only 1 gb 2 gb rams okay so dynamic ram that is dynamic ram it is a slower than sram slower than sram we cheaper than sram we use transistors capacitors resistors in the dram okay then dram is further developed into sd ram sd ram means synchronous dynamic ram sd ram means synchronous dynamic ram and other different rams are came from dram like ecc ram edo ram vram vram means video ram vram means video ram you know if you purchase a graphic card so what is a graphic card gpu graphical process unit graphic card is not a separate graphic card is also a cpu so graphic card contains cpu ram bios io controller kind of stuff okay so graphic card is also similar to your motherboard but size is smaller okay don't do all other processes only graphic process only it will handle okay so the process inside it is nothing but a processor only gpu also having a processor okay so 
the that type of graphic cards required a ram the ram we use there it is a vram type rams we used earlier okay next in a dynamic ram dram is developed as a sd ram which is faster than earlier synchronous dynamic ram the sd ram further develop into ddr sd ram double data rate double data rate sd ram and sd ram sorry ddr ram is further develop into ddr2 then ddr3 ddr4 the latest one is ddr5 okay so up to last class i told there is no ddr5 and recently i found there is a ddr5 so till now ddr5 uh um, is not available only uh, for a graphic cards purpose only but now it is available now it is available so currently you have a intel fifth no no so 12th generation processors are came now like i3 i5 i7 so ddr5 model is there okay so very recently when i trying to check for a laptop and all so i see in the, uh, there is a new uh, one of the editions of 12th generation processor i5 i7 i have seen ddr5 model ram they are using okay so ddr5 is also there so ram random access memory it's a primary storage it is a main memory okay so it is a volatile memory rams are two types static ram dynamic ram so static ram means sram which used as a cache memory which built inside of cpus dynamic rams are a dram the dram is further developed as sd ram and different other rams like edo ram vram kind of stuff the sd ram synchronous dynamic ram further developed into ddr means double data rate and double ddr2 ddr3 ddr4 and very new fresh version is ddr5 is also there okay guys understanding yes sir yes sir so even a rams also having a few uh, things you have to check it like this the specifications of rams also there so this is about a static ram which is we i already uh, forward those things okay and packages also there so sorry very good so i am going to uh, some ram specifics so when we, when we are telling so what is your ram capacity okay so what it is we are telling about a size ram size is olden days it is a mbs kbs now for our laptops we are using gbs okay so now we are using gbs mb tb tb ram sizes are there okay for example my ram size is i'm going to task manager go to performance memory can you see my ram size is 12 gb but there is no specific 12 gb ram is not there i added two rams 4 plus 2 sorry sorry mind uh, <laughs> 4 plus 8 4 plus 8 totally 12 gb ram so two rams i am i used here there's a slot used to off to speed 1600 megahertz speed clock speed 
form factor sodium sodium small uh, small outline jewel inline memory module okay so that is like a laptops and mini pcs use sodium laptops mini pcs use sodium okay and look at this available memory i have a 12 gb ram but almost more than 50% of ram taken by system already so i got a less than 6 gb you see here it is 54% of memory utilization by my processors how to gain more memory better to close unused tabs like this okay if in case if i don't require this so better close the unused tabs better to close background applications manage the startups manage the startups disable the startups disable the services okay frequent restarts so regular means frequent means not every one hour you have to restart so every day at least you have to restart or shut down your computer at the end of your work completed you know some people don't shut down their computer they leave like that they close the late they think they, they completed today work they close the late system went to sleep mode the background task even it is running like that only it consumes your battery power it consumes your resources like a cpu memory and disk so when you are working really seriously on something unused one will block your means it make more burden so that is important so shut down regularly to 51% 5.52 5.7 5.8 available even unused tabs close unused applications if you are doing like that it can get a more available memory so more ram better speed right this is how you can check your memory and the total memory the available memory okay and what type of package what model it is utilization percentages so that is it speed mega head speed it is in a megahertz nowadays most of the pro, uh, still rams are in a megahertz speed only okay size of the ram speed of the ram of course voltage levels also there voltage levels Okay, means low voltage, normal voltage like this. Voltage level three volts, one point five volts, one volt, like kind of stuff is also there. So voltage level also very important when you are upgrading. So it should be matches to your uh, CPU speed also. So when you go to the CPU specifications, for example, my processor is i5 three two three. 0m is my processor okay so go to intel website like this this are my processor and the beside number so there are few differences are there See, this is my processor. Number of cores, number of threads. Okay. If you want to know what is a core, 
like this. This is a number of cores, number of threads like that. OK. So this processor support up to 32 GB. That is 16 GB, 32 GB it will support. And memory type is a DDR3 low level. 13, 33 or a 1600. So mine is already 1600. So I have to use like that. So DDR3 model low voltage. OK, RS 1600 or a 1333 MHz frequency uh, memory. OK, number of channels it support only two. So do not, you cannot use anyway for five kind of stuff. So based on your processor, how much RAM you have to put it, what type of RAM you have to put it, you should get. You have to go through it and you have to read it. OK, so this is what I, what I want to tell about a, a memory. Of course, issues, problems or any some issues there. What is the reason that is behind a RAM is there or not? How to upgrade a RAM? Compulsory check that. Processor support. Okay, to upgrade your RAM, you need a processor support. Type of processor, support from the processor, motherboard support, number of slots. These are very important. Okay. Which is packages. Earlier days, you have a DIC package, then later, there is a SIM package, single inline memory module package, DIM package, dual inline memory module package, RIM package, Rambus inline memory package, small outline, dual inline memory package. So, this type of package we use it for uh, laptops and mini pieces. Tell me, tell me. Okay. So, what is a dip? Dip means sorry, um, RAM package. You know, if you ever see that's like a IC kind of stuff. OK, like this. This is called a dip package. So both side legs are there like this. This is a dip package. So this is a better picture.
OK, so you can see this is the dip. Later on days, different variations are came. OK, this is how RAM is look like, but here. I will go for the lines. This is laptop RAMs. This is the laptop RAM. The laptop RAM cannot be fitted into cannot be fitted into normal PC. PC RAM. This is PC RAM cannot be fit into laptop. Under laptop, we have a the under if you flip the laptop and backside, if you open the back kind of stuff okay so uh, you will find this kind of arrangement so you have to insert the ram inside like this okay so look at this okay. you have to insert uh, this is arrangement is different that is a conversion kind of stuff so a lot of conversion kits are there now like that so this is a um, desktop rams it's a desktop RAM. The different RAMs. So on RAM, there is a label compulsory. You have to go through the label. Then only you can understand what type of RAM it is. See, this is the laptop backset RAMs. Desktop RAMs will be there like this. This is the desktop RAM. This is RAM slots on your motherboard. So this is how we can able to insert these RAMs. So the RAMs are different looks. For example, if you look at this, it does, does not contain any cover on it. OK, but certain RAMs having a, a full cover, cover on it. Okay. So uh, if possible, will see this normal RAM insertion. This is a normal RAM, DDA. Uh, are uh, so dim package RAMs, but this is rim packages. If you see, there is a small cover like a heat sink. RAM get heated to protect the RAM from overheating. We are using a shield on it, so heat sink on it. So Fury, this is a RAM type is a Fury. Okay, Kingston company so what it is it's a rim package ram bus inline memory module package it's a heat sink on it for gamers for a gamers and all this type of ram we use it okay so dual inline memory module single inline memory module sodium small outline team packages dual inline memory modules used for a laptops and a mini pcs mini pc small micro uh, laptops are there my laptop computers are there mini boxes are there small box size okay so they use this kind of stuff So this is another picture. So how RAMs are look like closely. Next. I want to draw a small picture guys here. I will try. So we have uh, actually I draw first always a traditional diagram. And now uh, I'm going to draw a, a small understanding purpose. Okay. First of all, I need a, a box. Okay. So this box is nothing but GPU. Okay. Yeah, very good color. This is my CPU. 
inside this CPU. I have a another box. The better different color must be there. Otherwise, it is infill. It, it is like a light color for understanding. Ash memory. So this is nothing but a, a cache memory. Next. This is RAM. This is RAM. So different fillings. I use paint version, so that's a very easy. This is RAM. Okay. Next one is IO controller. I'm I'm jumping. Uh, uh, it is like a IO controller type. Have to learn shortcuts now. Okay, so this is like this. IO controller connects IO devices. Oh, bar. This is better. So IO controller is connected to different devices. <laughs> so better it is a random writing is always better. Different devices like a hard disk. OK, your keyboard. Mouse. Your uh, uh, monitor. What code device, right? Monitor, audio chip. Okay, audio chip, Bluetooth chip. Okay, everything, either input or output. So whatsoever it is, these are all devices. The devices cannot connected to your CPU directly. These are all connected to your I/O devices, I/O controller. IO controller understand what is the device and where it is located, what type of device it is. Based on that, it make a communication. So IO, what are the data is there? It go to IO controller, IO controller to your RAM only. IO controller to your RAM. Then RAM put the data into your cache memory. Put the data into your cache memory. OK, so RAM collect the data and the RAM put the data and instructions data and as well as the instructions right to your cache memory. Cache memory is a much faster. So then what happened? The cache memory put the data into your CPU. CPU internally there is a, a 
ALU unit, arithmetic and logical unit. So CPU process the data and put the data into your cache memory. OK, put the data into your cache memory. And the cache memory finally. Put the data instructions, everything into your RAM only. OK, and the RAM. So once you got the output. From CPU. And give the output to, to your IO controller. The IO controller. So give the output on your memory or store in the disk or I put the uh, on your screen like this, right? I am drawing and also I am typing. So I am giving input. Input is collected by IO controllers, understand by IO controllers and give that instructions data information to your RAM only. OK, uh, your RAM. Collect the data and give it to your cache memory. The cache memory is a. Uh, 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 divide your data into. Data and instructions and give it to your CPU. The CPU contains. A unit called ALU unit. Arithmetic and logical unit. And. CU. Control unit. <laughs> so paint base is far better. So this is you. OK, so. Arithmetic and logical in it and control in it. So this is your <laughs> CPU. So the cache is built inside your CPU, so which makes faster communication between CPU and RAM. RAM collect all data stored in RAM, RAM to CPU. So this is the main functionality, guys. Try to understand. Drawing, drawing, drawing. OK, so I think I missed something or not all, not all. So what are the data is there? So passes through your RAM. So RAM to CPU. Hey, what happened? Draw, draw. Okay. Why it is not drawing anything? Draw with the touch. Very good. OK, like CPU. And RAM will communicate each other. We cannot communicate it to CPU directly. OK, so RAM is like a. Is a kind of stuff. It is last time I told one. Uh, example for this one. It is like a, a fetcher. RAM is like a it's a kind of fetcher type. Means this is a big well. And here it is a. a a work kind, kind of work is going on like his processor kind of stuff, some process unit and this is like a big well. And it's like a bucket. What it is I'm fetching the water and pouring here. So what we can say so we are having a data here, but not permanently. It's like a fetching type on it collect the data. And it, it, it loads. We, we load the data instruction into RAM. RAM give it process, process, process it. And give it your RAM. The RAM give it to. I O 
devices. So this is here a one small black black diagram of your cache memory, CPU, and that. Again, so uh, yeah. Cache memory, you have a label survey, label one, label two, label three, cache memory. Already I told level three cache memory, we can able to check it. It varies from one processor to another processor. So L1, L2 are fixed uh, memories inside. In L, L1 also is divided into instruction cache uh, plus the data cache is there. So you can look at your cache memory sizes also from here. You can see. So this is 128 kilobytes of L1 cache, 512 kilobytes of L2 cache, and 3 MB L3 cache. Okay, cache memories are very useful to process data very fast. The speed of cache memory is a almost speed of processor. RAM speed is lesser, cache is equal to CPU speed only. Okay, these are a small information about your RAM, RAM and ROM, random access memory, read only memory, volatile memory, non volatile memory. Volatile means when power is off, data is lost. Okay. Normally, we can add a extra RAM, we can remove the RAM, we can replace the RAM. Depends upon your CPU. So, next one is different RAM types are there. So, one is static RAM. Dynamic RAM, static RAMs are cache memories. Dynamic RAMs are DRAMs, that is further developed into SD, DDR, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, DDR5. Each RAM having a, a frequency speed is there. Clock speed is also there. Okay, so if you want to go with an examples of this clock speed, I can give 13. 33 megahertz, which is I showed my system having a 1600 megahertz speed. Okay. Um, latest is for 4400, 4400. I think so. No guarantee in that. Okay, because of you know how to know all this information. One is Intel website. So another one is go to Amazon or Flipkart. He got a lot of information regarding RAM, ROM, CPUs, laptops, SSDs. Yeah, it is not opening. It will take time. I, I open a motherboard. Look at this. What is the type of motherboard? What type of RAMs it is support? OK, it is here. And also, I am going to a, a RAM. So, see it is, it's a Corsair 8GB RAM, DDR4 type, 3200 MHz frequency RAM. Okay. So, what type of RAM it is? So, other uh, details you have to check. It. See, this is a another type of RAM. So, Kingston. Fury 8 GB 3200 megahertz 8 GB CL 18. This is 32 GB RAM. 32 GB RAM 1600. Now 16,000. Okay, 16,000. This is another uh, type. So if you see this is this RAM is also a DDR4 RAM, but different frequency and there is no outer layer. It is a 8 GB RAM. 
okay this is a pc value pc uh, 19200 like pc 212800 that type of rams also there number of pins i think it is enough for you i'm going to all rams here memories okay so these are uh, different RAMs you can able to see. OK, so you don't need to go for a. Yeah, very good. So it is 8 GB DDR3 L model. My model only 1600 exact my model unbuffered sodium. So you want I want to buy this one. Now it is cost is 7000. Because it's a. Older RAMs are very costly. Newer RAMs are normal cost. So compulsory, check it guys. So when you are buying a RAM, when you are buying a new laptop or desktop, better to buy a new uh, two new versions. Otherwise, what happened? <laughs> the cost is like that. So it's a crucial 4GB. It is OK cost. 1500 is OK cost. And I'll go to 8 GB. Yeah, now it is good. Like this. But still it is DDR4, not DDR3. OK, so. See that DDR4 cost and DDR3 cost. This is DDR4. Little cost class is le less. Like that. So I got a, another uh, I said no. So DDR5 is also there, but it is not showing particularly here. New releases, maybe. Tiny desktop. This is like. This is tiny desktop. Think Center. Dual Core Processor 4GB RAM, fine. Yeah, that is enough. I want to add something here, but I am unable to add it like here. Sorry. I have a 4GB RAM. 8GB RAM. For some people, but to tell a GB RAM, so they will telling like this, sir, I have a uh, 500 GB RAM, one terabyte RAM. So how 500 GB RAM you have? Guys? So it's a hard disk. They will tell in a GB in this one. So what is your hard? 4 GB hard disk, sir. 4 GB hard disk. What you do with it? 500 GB RAM is okay, but it, because maybe you are very 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 rich guy, okay? So maybe you may have a 500 GB uh, RAM, OK, but 4 GB hard disk, what you will do with it? Even pen drives also we are not using 4 GB. So meaning is so check the specifications guys properly. Something I'm missing in the RAMs. Anybody help? Something I want to add about the RAMs. Yeah, yeah, right, right. This is the specifications. These are the uh, different packages, right? Here I want to add a small part and I will give you a break. Okay. Very good. <laughs> okay. To upgrade. Break. Or replace. RAM, you have to follow 
these things. Okay, you want to upgrade. Upgrade means you want to add more RAM or you want to replace the RAM. Okay, or you want to replace the RAM. CPU specifications. CPU model specification. What type of CPU you are using? So in that one, compulsory. So support. Okay, compulsory CPU model specifications go to RAM support and speed. Speed support. Okay, size support for a size and speed, which is I already I showed in a Intel website how to check that kind of stuff. Again, I'm showing, I will try to show. And this is yeah, here it is. Look at here. My memory specifications under this CPU is 32 GB maximum 32 GB. This CPU supports. How many memory channels it will support? Two. Okay. And DDR3 support this frequency to support memory types. Okay. Speed means you can say memory. Types okay, DDR3, DDR2, DDR4. So, like that, check it. Next step, check motherboard. Specifications number of slots. Slots, RAM slots. Number of RAM slots. Check the how many number of slots. Are. Some motherboards having two, some are four. Maximum four support is there. Like CPU supporting maximum four slots, but your motherboard having only two. Okay, so uh, like a motherboard having a uh, four slots, but your CPU support only two slots. So like that. Check the compatibility number of RAM slots on it. Okay, memory type. What is a memory type? Again, what is a memory type? DDR3, DDR4. You know, I have a, my, my, my computer is there that is supporting DDR4. My laptop support only DDR3. Now my friend having a extra DDR4 uh, RAM, so he want to put it in my laptop. It won't fit because my laptop support DDR3 supported motherboard. Okay, so uh, like that. So one is a CPU, another one is a your motherboard RAM slot. Motherboard RAM slot that is also got to check. It. The voltage levels compulsory. Check the voltage levels. Like a, it's a 1.5 volts. L means 1.5 volts type. Point is there. I put a point. It is gone. Okay. L means 1.5 volts. Not specified. L not specified. It is a normal voltage. 3 volts. volts kind of stuff is there normally is three volts 1.5 volts okay low voltage high voltage okay. specification you can see it is l l is specified here okay number of channels support okay to upgrade and replace of the RAM, you have to take care of these things. Compulsory know your old RAM. You know what we do uh, when I got this laptop, it is 4 GB. So what I have done, so I open my laptop backside. I take the picture of old uh, RAM and uh, I done some research. Again, I went to the shop person. I showed this is my existing RAM. 
I want an upgradation. I want a, an upgradation. So then uh, he asks like, hey, so this is the equivalent one, so which matches to the world one. M A T. Very easy way. Better to check. Check the matches to world RAM or not. Frequency matches. Everything. Not only total capacity, guys. Also check the frequency matches, matches to the world RAM um, kind of stuff. Better to check it. Already I told map speed here, but I, again I'm telling like this. Okay guys, understand about air RAM. I didn't tell about troubleshooting. I will tell the troubleshooting. Small, small troubleshooting things separately. Next I will start with the ROM and uh, what is BIOS, ROM, ROM types, BIOS, UEFI, differences, BIOS settings we'll discuss. Okay. No one is speaking anything. Okay, okay. 